everyone, it's Christine again with The Artist Pod, and today we'll be adding a black background to the stellar sea eagle we drew last week. Um, part of the reason I'm doing this is when I'm creating a design, I draw on a black background, but when I'm creating the PNG, I remove the black background, the white black wrap, the, the white background, and all I get is that graphic. It's the individual lines that encompass the, the animal itself. Um, over, I should say probably a year ago, I realized or sort of had an epiphany that it wasn't printing as well on Heather Color shirts, and because of that, I needed to come up with a solution or I needed to dump the Heather Colors. And I really like the Heather Colors. This shirt, for instance, this is a Heather Green. Really like the Heather Green and Heather Gray and, and those sorts of colors. Um, but it occurred to me that, you know, printers in general are struggling to print these designs because you have so many individual lines. So I've been going through over the past year when I have time and adding a black background um, sort of just surrounding the, the graphic itself. And um, I thought I'd kind of show you um, what I was doing and how I was doing that in Photoshop. So let's get arting. All right, so here is the finished um, uh, Stellar Sea Eagle. So because I draw on a black background, I don't have a black background, right? Which is some of what I've been doing with a lot of my designs and I can't do it for all of them is adding a black background and I'm gonna kinda go over how I'm doing that today. First things first though is when I once I'm done with the design I make it as large as I can for 15 by 18. So I usually work in 15 by 18 with a a hard round brush size set to 15. Um, we won't be drawing today because it's already done. We we drew it last week and I'll link to that at the end of the video. Um, but after I save it, there's a few adjustments I make, right? I save it as a JPEG and then I save it as a PNG. So PNG is the final file that's going to go on a t-shirt or whatever else I'm um, uh, going to be printing this up on. But as a t-shirt, this is, first of all, this is way too low. So I'm just going to go over to edit, go to free transform. I'm going to push it all the way up to one sort of pixel down and I'm going to make sure it's centered, right? You want to make sure it's right there in the center. Nudge it, and I'm going to just hit enter. So here I'm going to go ahead and save. Oops, not save as. Now, um, I also think it's a little too big still, so I'm going to come back in here to free transform, and I'm going to make it a little smaller, so it fits a little better on a shirt without the feathers going all the way off. Um, and then we're going to save it, and I'm just going to type in, you know, smaller, basically, PNG. Okay, so now to add a black background to the image itself when you don't have one, I'm going to come up here back to where, back to when it's up here, <laughs> not all the way back to the beginning. Um, I'm going to copy the layer. So to copy a layer, I'm going to come over here to the right um, where it says layer one, and I'm going to drag this down to it's right next to the trash can. I'm going to drag it down to there, and I'm going to just release, and it's going to automatically copy it. I'm going to turn off the front layer and I'm going to drag the layer one copy underneath. Then I'm going to come up here to image, adjustments to levels, and I'm going to take the level icon here and drag it all the way to the left, which is going to make it completely black. Then I'm going to hit OK. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is add a stroke to it. And you could skip this step um, realistically, but I like how it looks with that, so I want the stroke color to be black, so to make sure it's black, right, I can click here and then drag it. What I'm looking for is to this value to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. If, you know, you click in the corner, sometimes you'll see it has um, numbers. You don't want that, so just drag it and pull it, and it'll, it'll make it appear black. Um, so I'm going to do the inside at 7 and hit OK, and then I'm going to do this several more times, the center at 3. Um, the outside at 1, it's going to work really well on the eagle because it's small, and then the inside at 7 again. Okay, so that's just going to help me um, when I do the next step, which is taking this magic wand tool, and I'm going to click sort of around the eagle. I'm not clicking on the eagle itself. I'm going to zoom in and make sure it's fine so you can see like um, what the magic wand tool does. And you can select some tolerances. You know, you can change this tolerance setting to determine how much of a different color it's willing to accept. So you can see the stroke adds just a little bit more. It's going to encase all of this when it's done. But it won't go past 
where there's a full edge, right? There's not enough room for the selection to have made it through the R without hitting another value, so it's not getting the middle of that R. So like any select tool, when I'm using the magic wand tool and I wanna select something more, I'm gonna hit Shift, and then I'm gonna click on that space to select it. Um, and then I'm gonna kinda do a quick look. Because of that, sometimes it can do weird things, so I'm just gonna take a look around. So maybe I want this to be included, right? Just little things like that. Um, it, it's particularly noticeable when you're dealing with like whiskers because you gotta go in between all the whiskers and select it. Um, but because of how we drew the feathers, it might have some of that happening here. Not as much, but probably a little bit. Right, so I'll, a lot of this seems fine. All of that's gonna fill in when we're done. I'm just doing the same thing over here. Yeah, that's fine. So give it a once over, make sure everything looks okay. Um, and then I'm gonna reselect that magic wand tool. I'm gonna come up here to select inverse. Now, if you've ever used the magic wand tool before, um, if you just leave it as, a, as is, it gets very um, pixelated. It's not a good selection to use and just its base selection because it'll look very, very blocky and that's not the effect I want. So I'm gonna come over here to select and mask. I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna come over here to smooth and I'm gonna select five. Um, I found that that tempers off the edges quite a lot. You could probably do it more. The more you do it, the more it'll blur out. Um, and I don't want any sort of edges that are not fully um, solid that have just a little bit of, of you know, um, transparency to them. So I'm gonna leave it at five. Um, and for the most part, that does a great job. Every once in a while, you'll find one little like jagged edge with it, but five seems to be a great setting. And then I'm gonna hit, okay. Uh, and then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna create a new layer by clicking this button down here, create a new layer. It's where we had dragged that layer to begin with. And I'm just gonna come up here to edit and then fill. And it can be the foreground color because it's black. I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm gonna deselect that and pop the top layer back on and that's what we get. Right, so it filled in all those gaps with a black background. I guess that's how I drew the wing. Probably because I popped it off. That's okay, wings don't have to be fully straight. They can be a little jagged sometimes. Makes it a little bit more um, believable. So it's fine to have wings that are a little bit more rough. But you can see it's got, for the most part, a nice smooth edge, but every once in a while you'll have, have a little jagged section like in here. It's really sharp, but for the most part it's got that smoother look to it. I'm fine with a little jagged spot every once in a while. Right, so just doing a once over. Um, and then you can see the signature, we added that little spot so it can come through. Have some of that down here. So if I, if I thought that this was too much, then I can come up here with the lasso tool. Sometimes it doesn't do a nice job with some of this where it's just a little too much. And I'm gonna make jagged sort of lines to mimic feathers and fill it. and it'll temper how that looks. So when we pull back, that won't look so bad. Hold on, maybe a little bit more here. Right, so it, it tempers that more jagged section and you can readjust until it seems right. So I can pull this up if I feel like that needs it feeling like that needs it. Um, and because it's, you know, we're dealing with fur, um, adding that in won't, won't seem too out of place. Well, fur, I guess in this case it's feathers. Um, so it adds just that little bit of a black surrounding it. Very sensitive to your marks. The more portrait style where they're bigger um, the change is a little bit more subtle, but uh, on something like this, where you know it's smaller because it was a full figure, the change is much more noticeable, but that's okay because it's... The reason I'm doing this um, is on shirts when I'm printing it out, Heather colors sometimes don't take the ink, the ink as nicely. So in those cases, because I really like how the Heather green and Heather gray shirts work, how they look, 
um, I, I add a black background so it creates basically a, a full image instead of individual lines. And it's much more likely to take the full image than to have to, than to struggle with, you know, all these individual lines when it's printing it. Now it has a completely black background to sort of support it. Um, so that's what I've been doing for, you know, past few weeks in my shop, changing over all of my um, uh, designs to have this black background as an option in the event it doesn't print nicely. And I can't do it for all of them. Um, the eagle's a nice one, but sometimes animals that have really long hair, like horses or something else I struggle with because it's hard to figure out where there would be gaps we would be seeing through um, or lions with the mane versus where the hair would be chunking together. So um, on those, I, I've opted not to do it, but on a lot of the others, I can. And then I'm just going to come up here to save it and add, you know, black background to that. There we go. All right, so that's how you add a black background uh, to the designs. I hope that's helpful. In fact, this iguana um, has a black background, and, and it makes it a lot more vibrant on the shirts, especially on those heather colors of the green and the gray. Um, so it can be really effective. I hope it's helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.